So did he become the blue goo? What's going on guys? It is I, some Joe Schmo here, back with season two, episode one of The Expanse. And I thought guys, I thought that if we gave it a day of just taking time to really just collect my thoughts, maybe kind of figuring out something that happened within that last season finale of season one with The Expanse, I still have no goddamn idea what the hell just I, what I saw, what happened. Anyway, I'm looking forward to now jumping. I'm, I'm actually kind of glad now thinking about it now that we were able to watch the season finale and the start of season two in one week. Maybe we can get some uh, questions answered. More than likely, we'll probably just have more questions developed though with the start of season two. Uh, I hope you guys are enjoying your time here, guys. It's been Mr. Toad's wild ride throughout season one and I am quite frankly excited to start season two with all of you guys. So if you guys are new to the channel, if you guys just found these expansive reactions, then welcome. Welcome to this crazy ride, guys. I have no idea what is about to unfold, but I do ask that if you guys are new here, let's try and keep things spoil free. You guys have been awesome about it so far, so good, and let's hope to continue on with these good times. What's going on, guys? Some Joe Schmo here from the future. I'm coming back through this edit really quickly. Just wanted to give you guys a quick little heads up. Uh, I had my second vaccine literally like six hours before I started filming this reaction, so if my energy levels aren't quite there as normal videos are, just know that's the whole reason for it. Also, I normally don't do this, but I am going back in just to provide a little bit of a context reaction to a one scene I was going through uh, during the edit that I really didn't address at the moment, again, because I was kind of just sitting there brain a little fried. So anyway, here's this reaction. Oh shit. Dude, that is sick. Yeah, that's like a hero unit from like Dune 2000 or something. <laughs> They're shipping out. Rumor is you're heading to Phoebe Station. So Ooh. say your goodbyes and kiss your mommy. It's gonna be a Oh, cool. Are these guys, all right. So we're gonna get some history about what happened on Phoebe, finally. I'll catch up with you in a minute. Roger that, Gunny. So at what point, how long has like Mars been established for this far, like in the future? Maybe we should let the guys on Tycho handle this. Then whatever's in there will belong to Fred Johnson. Roger that, boss. Take it easy. That's a cryogenic chamber at the core. Losing power. Which also means whatever it was freezing is gonna become unfrozen. What's in there? What's in there? Jurisdictional issues. Hey, you've been having trouble what, working the plumbing? No. <laughs> Which in? Alpha, Omega. You know, because I just took an explosive. Never shit. mind. <laughs> Same here, Miller. Because Eros is some backwater that doesn't deserve basic humanitarian aid. See, they picked Eros to test their weapon on because they knew. Nobody gives a shit about 100,000 belters. No answer for it. Truth and justice. You still believe that? Me, I don't care much if justice gets involved. I just, I just want him dead. I never did say it, but thanks for getting me off Arrow so I wouldn't have made it without you. Thanks for the lift. Oh, hey, I know. Is that like samples of that shit? Get it out of there! The engines in those ships were built by the OPA operatives working for Fred Johnson. Fred Johnson was a military hero who became infected with the cause of his own enemy. Damn, dude, she's putting that shit on Fred. How to build an enemy 101 right here. Hello? 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 Hold on, I can't hear you. Yo, dude, she almost got centered on my dollar right there. <laughs> Holy. Brother molecule seems to behave uniquely in each subject, <clears throat> mutating rapidly in each different biomass. Proto molecule that gave the goddamn thing a name. Phoebe station's where it all started. The only way to see what it's evolving into is by feeding it a larger biomass. Phoebe was an extrasolar object 
trapped by Saturn's gravity eons ago. What if it were merely a delivery system? A way to send a protomolecule to our solar system. Mmm. So at least Did he like just say what I think he said. He said extra alien object. First proof of extraterrestrial life. Ooh. This is a gunship. We have no idea what's waiting there. No idea how long they're sticking around. I mean, maybe they already know that you picked up their scent. We're not going in blind. Tycho first. Cab's right. Nobody asks you no Nick. <laughs> <laughs> no Nick. I love it. Then we'll hide it. Where? Out here. No one knows we have it. No one even knows we made it off Eris alive. There's an idea. Alex, do it. Gonna put in for new gear one of these eons? Oh, come on. Me and this armor have been through the shit together. We got a history. I can picture it now. You, in that suit, planting the Martian flag in the Statue of Liberty's tiara. You know the second most dangerous thing in the solar system next to a Martian marine is a UN marine? Oh, the Earth would chimes in. Yeah, I'm more Martian than you, Hilly. My parents had to sacrifice to have a kid on Earth. Immigrate here when I was five. Mm -hmm. We chose Mars. Mars chose us. Hey, hey, here's a point, Hillman. The only thing that makes you a Martian is falling out of your mother's gravity well. Gravity well. Is that like, AKA your mom's like pregnant stomach? You'll be landing on Phoebe Station, securing the facility until we get a science team in for a deeper investigation. After Phoebe went silent, Doniger was sent to investigate. Every one of the bodies was frozen to the walls of the ice tunnels. It looks like they were incinerated. All of the data cores have been wiped clean. This is a cover up. Okay, so this is current. I thought this was like a flashback for a second based on, well, based on nothing, I guess. I know that you and your team did a rotation on the Donnie. I knew people on that ship too. Captain Yao was a friend, but still nobody knows what really happened. We know those stealths were earth built. So says Fred Johnson. We will not be led into war on anyone's leash. There you go, yeah, know the facts first. I was a private during the Vesta blockade. Half the Earth's fleet was headed to Mars to annihilate its former colony. If they couldn't have what we built, they were going to pound it back into dust. We went to bed every night thinking that we would wake in nuclear fire. We all grew up with that story because it wasn't wanted. And we've managed to avoid a shooting war with Earth up till now. That's our job, to make sure that that war never happens. And because of Vesta, we pushed back the terraforming project. 50 years and 50 more. All those resources to the military now, none of us will live to see an atmosphere over Mars. That was the price. But it's still worth fighting for. So this scene was so freaking cool, like, I mean, we've heard a lot about in season one, the relationship and how on edge Mars and Earth are, but now to see and hear an actual story that really flushes out this whole thing. Uh, I mean, it's no wonder that, you know, Draper is so resentful and so spiteful of Earth because essentially that, I mean, what I got from the context of the situation is that Earth was basically about to like go like full on war nuclear on Mars. Mars basically had to halt all their terraforming like projects and essentially build up an army so that they could compete and not be like bullied by Earth. So rightfully so, I get now a lot more why Mars has so much spite, so much hatefulness towards Earth because it's like you essentially ruined our uh, opportunity to essentially thrive in this position. So from what I get from Draper, she said it basically like set them back, what, like a hundred plus years at this point in order to um, terraform their, in order to terraform Mars. So again, really love that scene. And again, going back through it post edit, I was like, I have to talk about this one scene because it was something that even at the moment, I really wasn't able to appreciate. But during that edit phase, I was like, wow, this scene is really, really something special. So anyway, guys, back to the reaction. You and I have something we need to get sorted out. We should get to that. Your pal, Simi? You're upset about that, right? I had nothing against him. I thought he was a decent guy. Decent guy? Yeah. But Naomi made the call. End of story for me. And when your pal pulled the gun, might as well have shot himself in right. the head. Here's what I see. Damn, okay. dude. You seem kind of like a trigger happy whack job to me. So let me lay it on the table for you. You shot my friend. If you need to square up, you know where I am. Jesus, Otherwise, dude. You should move on because you're poisoning the air on me. <laughs> oh, yeah, dude. I would not want to step up to Amos. Let's be real. Stay down, Miller. Jesus, dude. Amos, no! Amos! 
<laughs> Freaking Miller goes from like being like radiated to almost now getting like his like throat ripped out. But Amos too on the flip side should know like he at least deserves like at least like a free punch for like killing his friend. They're mobilizing for war. Martian ships are moving throughout the system. The Morrigan to Titan, the Africanus to Callisto and the Scirocco to Phoebe. We secure all our bases in the outer planets and head off their ships wherever we can. If we place our ships in the paths of theirs, they'll know we're ready for any planned acts of aggression. Mars does not want war. They want to get back to terraforming and building domes for their people. Sir, if we de-escalate, I am convinced that they will respond in kind. Sir, we're the most powerful nation in the system. We need to act like that. Pride isn't power. And what Jesus fast part of battlefield wisdom are you drawing from, Admiral? I mean, not that I'm involved in the military in any sort of capacity, but this just feels like so relevant to like, to just like what's happening with today's like world, right? I can only imagine this is like the same kind of hoo-ha that goes on within like, our type of government that like revolves around like the Middle East or with EU and like how all this activity is represented and whatnot. It just seems so on the nose. But again, what do I know? I, I'm just some Joe Schmo. Do you concur? I do. Redeploy the fleet. She's got them doubts though, man. Amos is different. Yeah. Okay, very different. But he's not crazy and he's not evil. He's just always needed someone to help him out with the world. Do you know that old story, Pinocchio? You're, uh, kind of like his guide star, right? Like Jimmy Cricket. Like Julius to you. We spent a lifetime watching all the evil shit people did to each other. Nothing got to me anymore. You know, Holden was shocked by arrows, so I was shocked that it hadn't happened a long time ago. But truly, I wake up some nights and I see her standing right there. <laughs> I know it's bullshit, but she takes my hand, she tells me, you belong with me. So you're leaving us already? Hmm? You're gonna just walk out into space? What kind of pathetic belters are we? We used to be a lot better at losing. Then we need to stick together. The UN and Nathan Hale is on a direct course to Phoebe Station. When we accelerated, they matched. And now the Nathan Hale is burning us. At this rate, they're going to beat us there. Uh -oh. Marlo would suddenly care about Phoebe Station. Must be something there they don't want us to find. Under no circumstances are we to allow Phoebe to fall under UN control. If you'd known it was me, would you have come? The last time I saw you was at Tarnopol's funeral. I suspect my son would have been going gray by now, too. You seem pretty relaxed for someone who nearly got blown up. I don't believe lightning strikes twice. What do you want? I want you on my security detail. You're a first-rate spy with a Robin Hood complex. You break the law and you don't get caught. You have skills which I thought might be useful someday. And this shadow government? I assume you're working with Fred Johnson? I have no love for Fred Johnson. Ah. But in this matter, his hands are clean. I'm being set up. When my investigation dead ends, I'll make an excellent scapegoat. Who are the players? Under Secretary Aaron Wright. Christ. I assume I did. Do they suspect you? If they did, I'd be dead already. I don't have time to waste. I need a spy. But she probably wants somebody that she trusts a little bit more than just like government official type of security detail. You okay there? I think all that radiation failed to give me superpowers. Oh, but him handling it, what's that gonna mean? I I'm still convinced like that radiation has something to do with how the uh, blue goo responds. Gladiator movies. Hey, Holden, yeah, you might just went dead. Hold. Can you hear me through the mask? Yeah. Oh, what's happening here? I can only imagine what you saw in errors. Or what it was like to nearly die that way. We did not choose this, but this is our fight now. We're the only ones who know what's going on down there. The only ones with a chance to stop it. Tell me that you're okay. This crew is depending on me. You've put your lives in my hands. I'm okay. Damn, yeah, they've gotten like super close of lately, huh? Uh -huh. 
perfecto. ¡Mua! No. <laughs> All right, hey. Uh, whoa, <laughs> there it is. I was like, come on, there's a little like sexual chemistry going on here. Okay. Way to go, James. Ooh. Oh shit. What the hell? It's a ground operation. Why are we firing missiles? My god, they've done it. Not yet. It takes two to play war. There's a 20 minute delay from the AO. By the time we get a full assessment, the hail and the Scirocco could both be dust. We have to anticipate the worst. System. Have any of their other ships changed course or launched or done anything provocative? Better by the time you see it on that display, it will be too I know how the fucking thing works. <laughs> You nitwit. The missiles are a message to back off, nothing more. Captain of the Hill knows what's at stake. He's a man of restraint. He's one of our finest. You know Captain Yevgeny? Since he was a little know-it-all at the academy debating me in philosophy. The wise thing to do right now is to target the MCRN fleet system-wide. Let this saber rattling play out. We'll hold until we hear from the hail. I didn't know we shared Captain Evgeny as a friend. An exceptional man. Yes, he never went to the academy. Ooh. Boom, baby. The Nathan Hale has not fired on the Scirocco. Their missiles were not intended for us. She just prevented a war. The Martians were targeting CB research station, oh. which sustained multiple direct hits. He's like, damn. Wait, but then where was that team heading, that MCC team? We should have had your head for you, amigo. Well, even now, or, uh... I still owe you one, don't I? Kind of an emergency. So I'm thinking to myself, I'm thinking, how often do we all just hang out together and just <laughs> talk, you know, without work? No, no, without work. Hey, listen, listen, listen. Viola. Viola. It's voila. Sit down. It's not bad, Marshall. You know, I remember a time in the series when there was real cheese. Mm -hmm. They busted that black market Kerr cartel on ninth level. Real cheddar from real cows. I busted that cartel. Yeah, it's me and Star Helix. We confiscated about a thousand kilos of high-grade cheddar. It's bound for some luxury spa. Craziest thing, though. The whole shipment disappeared from the evidence lockup, that thing. Oh, it just vanished. Uh... Okay, all right. We're okay, right? <laughs> so the governor, this guy wants to know. What is the plan for catching these dubious, nefarious <laughs> cheese thieves, <laughs> right? The whole room stinks like cheese farts. <laughs> <laughs> I think I know that, Governor. <laughs> Teddy the Detector, this guy was not. <laughs> Teddy the Detector? <laughs> yeah, you're a little kid, the little robot teaches you about the, uh, the air sensors. That's dope, dude. That was a dope scene. Like a little moment of levity between all of them. Look, Gunny, we... We got an intel flash. The hail was carrying 10 times our number. We weren't going to send you down to a slot. One of us is worth 20 of them. They wanted something on Phoebe and we vaporized it. I'd say the fight's coming soon enough. I hope you're wrong. Oh, sorry. Guess they pulled back then, huh? You said our job is to prevent a war with Earth. Ever wonder if we've got it backwards? Maybe we can't have the dream of Mars until we've had that war. Man, things are still tense between Mars and Earth, huh? Oh boy! All right, so that was episode one. Um, I got you. I got a new. Come on, dude. Holden and Naomi hooking up. It was. It was there, man. It was like right. It was so right before us. The patterns of like their continuous evolution in their relationship. But I'm just glad that they actually did something rather than just like this tumultuous, or rather than us just being led down this like season as after season of a flirtation of uh, a will they, won't they? It's like boom, get it out of the way, get it done with right there. Um, whether or not Amos, I don't know if Amos looks at Naomi like a romantic interest of any sort, or if it's more like a respect 
relationship or more of like a brother sister or mother son kind of relationship but like will he how exactly he's gonna take this i don't know man i mean amos is kind of like i know it's like what you see is what you get but i is he gonna take that well or not um the fact that they kind of i don't know if like miller is kind of at this point like letting bygones be bygones like hey amos had to do what he had to do but uh, i really man that that scene there where they were all having dinner together and knowing that not only was Miller from Ceres, but the, you know them having that story of the cheese from Ceres and how they all kind of had this you know common story or common at least um, interest in the sense of this one story kind of brought, bringing them all together at the dinner table. I thought that was a really, really well done scene between everybody and kind of gives you a little bit more development in everyone's kind of relationship there. Uh, and then Crescent, what's her? So I guess Crescent is obviously highly suspicious of, uh, was it Aaron Wright? Uh, I really like her just development over the last couple of episodes, like I said. Uh, I don't know, really, now she's kind of a little bit more on edge, obviously, with everything that she re uh, recognized from the end of uh, season one. So uh, I don't know. I don't know how much more safe she could be, obviously. Again, she kind of, like I said, got a little Queen Amidala there with a strike on her aircraft or whatever that shuttle was. So we'll see what's going on there. But anyway, strong opening to season two. I know obviously a few things that were kind of said, uh, but I, I think I remember someone saying that like the mid season of season two is really where something big maybe might unfold. Uh, anyway, guys, thank you so much for tuning on in. At the end of the day, what do I know? I'm still just some Joe Schmo sitting here reacting to some expanse. Until next week, y'all. Peace.